Chapter 5 of Red Shoes and an All Night Wristwatch by Lenari. What is Wump? That is a question for me. I really don't know. Um, Chapter 5 The day for his first attempt had the day for his first attempt had arrived. He had the guard scheduled down. He also had figured out the blind spots for the cameras. His entrance was a side window that had a simple lock. He could jimmy open with his knife. Izuku waited until the ten until the ten forty five PM shift exited the front door. Casually walking down the street, they would take 20 minutes to return. Izuku jumped down from the building to the right and over the wall. No mines or trip wires yet. The window opened easily. The building looked totally normal inside, a mix of a house and an office. Izuku crept through the entrance room. It was definitely a front. Maybe the majority was held in the basement? He checked a couple of rooms, finding them mostly empty. One office looked more elaborate than the rest, and Izuku quickly slid inside. There was a computer, which was what he was really after. He plugged in the equipment. He'd gotten to hack through the basic password that locked the computer. It was terrifying. Clicking through files while listening out at the same time, sweat was dripping down his neck. If there weren't any convention plans or diagrams of the there, he would find out a lot of scientific equations and research on genes and quirks. Izuku quickly made a copy and downloaded it into his drive. If we can't make larger batches, then there's no point. Izuku grabbed his equipment and threw it into his backpack. He ducked into the closet door as the door handle turned. I don't care what you have to do to the girl. If her cells won't multiply, then we'll need another option. Maybe a fusion with a different quirk? That could work. If we found a quirk suitable, or maybe a host to grow her cells. Izuku could see the vague outline of two people. Both both seemed to be wearing frightening-looking plague masks. He'd seen one of them before. He was pretty sure it was their leader, who went by the name Overhaul. I'll go down and check on things. One more time for the night, the other man murmured. See that you do. Overhaul started working on something on his computer. He didn't seem to notice that Izuku was left, had left it unlocked. It had been like hours of waiting before Overhaul got up and left. But when Izuku checked his watch, it had only been 15 minutes. It took everything within himself to leave. Eri was here. She was here. And Izuku knew without a doubt she was suffering. He quickly placed his his mics and made sure they were hidden. He had used up his time. The guards should be loitering outside at this moment, nearing time to change out with the others a few minutes later. Izuku knew that meant more people milling around, more chances to be seen. Izuku slipped out the window over the wall and disappeared. He spent the rest of the night going through the data he'd gotten, desperate to find data for other people. He'd got he'd gotten, desperate to find some real evidence. Arguably, it was proof of some experimentation. But there was no identifying factors beyond copies of DNA that would probably take weeks to analyze and no specific mention of Aerie. Izuku cursed, dropping his head against his desk. 
Izuku didn't go to the beach or on patrol the next night, too afraid to see either Yagi or Eraserhead, and have either man see through his secrets. Both of them were perceptive. He knew both of them would stop Izuku from going through his, with his plan. But the chance was too high that Izuku might have been noticed. If he was, then Eri would be moved, and everything would change. Even if the police believed him about the intel he provided, and Izuku knew from experience they wouldn't, it would take them days to get a raid in place, days that Eri might not have. The Yakuza probably had a mole inside the police anyway, and handing it over to a racer head wouldn't make a difference. The pro hero had to do things by the law. Izuku pre prepared carefully. A small pack with some things for Eri inside his larger backpack. His first aid kit in case she was hurt. Separately, he packed a copy of all of the intel he'd gotten. He left it on the rooftop for a racer head in case he didn't make it. I'm coming, Eri, he promised as the sun began to drop. Just like before, he entered at 10.45 p.m. He didn't bother stopping in the office, this time going deeper and looking for signs of a hidden entrance somewhere. A part of the hall looked more worn down. Izuku stopped in front of it of what appeared to be a normal vase or vase and some fake flowers. One of the flowers didn't have any dust on it. He pulled it, and instead of coming out the vase, it clicked in the entire section of the wall, swung back, revealing a long staircase. Ugh! Everything seemed empty and silent, but the corridors were bare. Izuku would have nowhere to hide if someone came out of the out of a room or one of the other doors. He had to rely fully on his ears to guide him. Through a couple of door through a couple of doors he heard people talking. One sounded like men training or fighting. Another he could faintly smell chemicals. If they were hiding a little girl, she would be deep within. Izuku came around a corner to see a man's eyes widen at the sight of him. Hey, what are you? Izuku punched, hitting the man in the throat. As the man choked, he swung around and roundhouse kicked his head into the wall, knocking him out cold. He pulled the man into a side alcove in the corridor. He couldn't waste energy energy carrying the guy down the entire hall just to find a hiding spot. He was running out of time. A slow, a soft glow was coming from under one of the doors up ahead. He held his breath as he worked on picking the lock. The door swung open. Eri was sitting on her bed, eyes wide and staring at Izuku. Izuku quickly took stock of the room. There was a camera in the corner. The base would be on alert soon. Hi, Ari. Do you remember me? I've come to save you, he said softly. Will you come with me? He took his mask off out of view of the camera before putting it back on. Ari hesitated for a moment and then nodded. Scurrying forward, Izuku wanted to cry at how trusting she was. Okay, can you hang on to my back? She, he asked the tiny girl. She clambered on, carefully wrapping her bandaged arms around his neck, and somehow knowing not to hold too tight. Hang on, sweetie. This could get bad. <sighs> Don't listen if any of them tell you to leave me, okay? You and I are going to get out of here together. Okay, her high voice whispered. Izuku ran as fast as he could. Somehow, there weren't any alarms going off. 
The sharpest guards were the ones that were currently on rotation outside. It had taken Izuku about 20 minutes to get through the underground base and find Eri, which meant those guards were back at the base. Izuku had to hope and pray that they were busy exchanging with the next guard in one of the many rooms they passed. They made it through the underground base without running into anyone. Their, lun- their luck ran out, though. Exiting the secret door, Izuku saw three guards heading down the hallway towards him. He gritted his teeth. One of them had a quirk that allowed him to eat practically everything. One could create crystals on his skin, and the third one was one of the few Izuku didn't know his quirk about his no no their quirk. Stop. Izuku came to a halt a few feet away. He had no real way to encou- to counter their quirks, but two of them were best to close combat fights. He pulled out his knife, only for the guy whose quirk he didn't know to instantly reach out t- and pull Izuku's knife to his own hand. Feisty little thing. Are you small, or just a child? Izuku didn't bother with any banter. He dropped the smoke pellets he'd bought just for this reason and darted past the villains. He saw a crystallized arm reach out for him, and a head full of teeth open, ready to bite down. Izuku ducked, grabbing the weird bag that was around the eating quirk villain's head and pulling it backwards on the villain so the villain couldn't see. The villain instantly reacted by eating through the bag, but then Izuku was able to place the guy's mouth in the past, in the path of the crystallized fist. The sound of teeth chomping down on crystal was an awful one. He used their confusion to dart forward down the hall out the, and out the window. You okay, Eri? He felt her fingers grip tighter on his hoodie as a response. He grabbed the pack he had prepared beforehand at the corner of the building across the street and continued to run. Eri's tiny body on his back had to be getting bruised by now. He was dodging and weaving. It couldn't be helped. A shot rang out, and something hit his shoulder. It had almost hit Eri. Izuku roared in anger and surged ahead. All of his hours of running around through back alleys and rooftops paid off, and he maneuvered through the alleyways like one of the rats that lived there. Izuku knew the Yakuza were still in close pursuit. He could hear shouting in the distance as he ducked into alleyway after alleyway. Eri, he panted, I'm going to need you to hide so I can distract the bad men, okay? Okay. He figured he had enough distance on them and went up one of the sides of the buildings. Two rooftops over was the place he had left the data for a racer head. He jumped the last gap, ducking down behind the tall side of the roof. Okay, Ari. I have a friend who's a good guy, a hero. He's not he's got long black hair and looks kind of grumpy. But he's really nice, okay? He wears a gray scarf. Izuku Ari's large eyes stared at him. I thought we stay together? I'll try, Ari. But those bad men might not let me. Izuku pulled the things he'd prepared out of his pack. These are for you, okay? I need you to stay here, at least until tomorrow night. If the gray scarf guy hasn't come by then, then climb down those stairs and find someone who looks nice and ask for help. It was a lot to ask the traumatized little girl. Izuku felt his heart flip with how badly he wanted to keep her safe himself. He heard sounds of pursuit on the street below. He had to divert them. Promise me, Eri. Please be safe for me. What's your name? She whispered. Deku. He whispered. 
Okay, Deku. I'll stay safe. I'll stay. He kissed the top of her head next to her little horn. Good girl. Before he could change his mind, he sprinted away. He got three roof roofs over before he slid down a gutter to the ground below. His shoulder had just been grazed, but it was aching. A street over, he could see the Yakuza searching near Ari's building. Izuku sprinted across the street like he expected. They saw him and pursued. Now to get as far away as he could. That is the end of chapter 5 of Red Red Shoes and an All Night Wristwatch by Lanary. Um. Yeah. Those three, uh, um, guys that had the crystal, the eating quirk, and the pickpocketing quirk were the three guys that Tamajiki? How do you say his name? The guy with the quirk that if he eats something, he can develop the properties of that for a short amount of time. Tamajiki, I think. Or who's Tamaki? Uh, but yeah. Oh, it's Tamaki Amajiki. <laughs> I was almost there. But yeah. That's the end. I shall see you then.